YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. Man, I got an article from you guys coming out of California. People keep commenting in the comments section that Californians are sleeping in their cars and in vehicles and RVs and stuff. And this is a really good article. It's long. It's got several vid videos built into it. And it kind of goes over uh, what you could buy for $1.3 million dollars type of thing, what, where you could buy the most expensive zip codes in the U.S. I'll leave a link below so you guys could read the, the full article. And it says, as California's housing crisis worsens, more residents are forced to sleep in their cars. So this is from the 4th of January, 2018. And don't mind that squawking noise. It's my chair. And no, I'm not passing gas. So there you go. From, from uh, 4th of uh, January, 2018, just a few, a few days back. I've been perusing through articles and I found this. And it's it's really depressing to see what's happening. And this is even worse. Watch this, guys. Kathy, 65, Phil, 74, live together in this RV along with their aging uh, standard poodle in a parking lot on December 18, 2017, Santa Barbara, California. She currently works part-time in Santa Barbara and struggles financially. She says she spent her career working as a paralegal and was a homeowner. Look at that. Kathy, 65, and Phil, 74. Wow. It's got to hurt. It really has, has to hurt. Income inequality in California is getting worse. In an affluent area such as Santa Barbara, the cost of living continues to rise while wages stay stagnant, leaving residents struggling to make ends meet. Even many of those with jobs could barely afford to stay in the city they called home for years. And the more of them are now forced to live out of their cars. So what's happening is people is this ever this is the gateway to, to Asia, right? So uh, a lot of this is what I'm thinking that's happening. This Seattle here got big because a lot of the new tax they put in Vancouver. So everyone went south to Seattle, this whole part, Tacoma, all these places that were affordable at one point, like north of Seattle, Olympia, different cities like that used to be affordable. Now they're getting bought out. Same thing with Oregon. Portland, Oregon's out of control with housing right now because a lot of people left California to go north to Oregon. But now that's not working out. So what's happening is everyone's moving this way. And then the more expensive cities up here are moving in this way. So let's see what happens there. One local organization uh, taking aim at the problem is the New Beginnings Counseling Center, which runs Safe Parking, a program that matches approved clients with monitored parking spots in large and lots near churches, government offices, and non-profits uh, where they can stay overnight. The safe parking program has been around since 2004, but just in the past 18 months, it has expanded to 20 to 23 lots, according to the LA Times. There's also been a waiting list of more than 40 families. Holy Jesus, why is this happening? Of the program's 150 clients, 40% are employed, okay? So, guys, you're going to stop saying, oh, you know, these people are, you know, expats, this, that, and they don't want to work and stuff. No, it, it, this, 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 it's, it's beyond. I don't even know what to tell you guys. Your people are working and they can't even, they can't even afford to, 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 to stay in a hotel or, or a hostel. They, they have to stay in, in cars. After a series of, uh, okay, wait, 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 yeah, after a series of seizures and forced, uh, uh, excursion, sorry, I'm sorry, guys, uh, forced Erickson to quit her job, I'm sorry, guys, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor while tackling the care of her dying mother, holy smokes. Although Erickson regained her health and was able to return to work, she is still struggling to make ends meet despite working two jobs, earning 12 and $14 an hour. She lost her apartment three months ago and has been spending nights in the car since. I wake up and I say, thank you, God, for keeping me safe last night and thank you for the safe parking program, er uh, uh, Erickson told the LA Times. Holy smokes. Santa Barbara residents aren't the only ones forced to live out of vehicles and trying to deal with the related challenges in San Jose. The growing number of RV dwellers have a hard time finding places to park. I have to do whatever I have to do. Roberto Ramirez, 40, 54-year-old resident who lives at his RV and collects recyclables for money, told the Mercury News. 
As housing prices in the Bay Area continue to rise, in an increasing number of residents turn to cars and RVs as their primary residence. Local officials must figure out how to support the growing population while, while, uh, sorry, fielding a correspondence rise in complaints about RV communities from other residents. The Mercury News reports. You're just not towing a vehicle, Tom Myers, executive director of the Community Service Agency of the Mountain View, told the news. You're towing someone's home. In San Francisco, the cost of living and the, the housing crisis are a pressing issue as well, and not just here for the working and middle class. When Houston-based uh, firm Patterson Sheridan expanded to Silicon Valley, it adopted to keep employees in Texas rather than have the relocate to California. Now, the lawyers commute once a month for meetings on a nine-seat, $3 million jet equipped with, with maple paneled cabins, plush leather seats. It was remarkable and cost-effective decision. Yeah, it is. Flying, flying in people is the best way to do now. Even with the cost of uh, the cost of the jet plus twenty five hundred dollars an hour cost to operate it, the firm says it could offer clients low prices because most of the work is done in Houston, where commercial real estate is forty three percent cheaper and salaries are fifty fifty two percent lower, and competition for technical talent uh, less fierce, according to the original report in the Houston Chronicle. Meanwhile, white collar white collar employees and local tech. Uh, Behemoths like Twitter and Facebook have also reported struggling making ends meet. Earlier this year, Twitter employee earning 160 large salary told The Guardian that he's barely scraping by in Silicon Valley. The guy's making 160 large. And when I keep saying six-figure incomes and people are having a hard time living with six-figure incomes and people laugh at, laugh at me and say, you're such an idiot, Mike. You're such a loser. You don't even know what six figures means. Well, there it is. The, the employee's biggest expense is the $3,000 a month rent he pays on a two-bedroom house where he lives with his family and two kids. Rent! He pays rent. He doesn't even own the damn place for three large a month, which he describes as ultra cheap. And that is actually ultra cheap for a house a detached home for that price. Families are priced out of the market, he says, explaining that it's hard to compete with the hordes of 20-something willing to pile on a shared house and still pay $2,000. Uh, $2, Per person for a room, for a room, a room this big. Look at my office where I work out of. This is the room, one of the rooms in my house that I work out of, and it's used as an office for me to work out of and, and do my my little eBay shenanigans thing I'm trying out here. Anyways, that's it right there, guys. I wanted to read this uh, for you guys. I really wanted to put this out there. I really feel for these people. I, I really do. My heart goes out to these people. A lot of them are hardworking people. A lot of them have put their time in. A lot of them have their parents and grandparents have contributed to build this infrastructure that they're now they can't live in. Half of these you uh, half of these housing houses and and, and 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 condos are all left empty because of investors. You got this huge mix coming in from the from the gateway to the west here. You got a huge mix coming in here, and it's pushing people out. And people, and in the United States, I think it's going to be a huge problem because it's against their constitution to put in a foreign buyer's tax or a speculation tax. It's against their constitution. So in Canada, a lot of cities now have that. They're protecting, they're trying to protect the Canadian proper because it has gotten out of control. I'm really looking forward to see what's going to happen in the United States and how things unfold. I really hope I'm wrong. I really hope I don't know what I'm talking about and I have no idea and I'm delusional. I really hope so. Because this is not, this is not good at all. I'll leave a link below so you can watch the triple videos, three, four videos on this. Really good videos. And um, this is, this is, it's tragic to see this happening in the west coast of the United States. And, and it's happened on the west coast of Canada. And then once the tax was implemented in Vancouver, the tsunami went east and south. The tsunami went south to Washington State and east to, to, to Toronto. The smart ones, the smart investors and speculators went south to Seattle. The ones that went east are losing now because of all the uh, stringent plans they put in in the Toronto housing market now that's making it collapse. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much.